No, not yet. We're about to go live. You ready now? Guess we're going live, oh. No, 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 don't like me. We're going live. Huh? Oh, wait, I have to put in my <laughs> Tanji. No! Okay. My test. I also made sure, by the way, that my microphone is working and you guys aren't going to call me out that it's not working anymore. Also, I have your Tanjiro with me. Tanji, come on. You're the one who's going to pull in more likes and more <laughs> folks to come in. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all having a great week ahead. It's, it's just Tuesday. No, it's already Wednesday. It's hump day, so two more days to go before we finally go for a weekend. Hope you guys are having a not too hectic week so far. So good evening. Danjaro, how about you? How are you doing? Danica on LinkedIn, by the way, says, I need a lot of motivation this week. Me too, because I still have a long way to go. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're full day for workshops. So I need a lot of energy for that. Let's do an attendance check before we start. And by the way, this evening, our topic is still going to be the same. We're going to be pursuing part two of pursuing a side hustle or a freelance career. But as usual, if you have any other questions that are related to your career, you can also still type them in the chat box. Okay. So Dave also says stressed at work. Kokon from LinkedIn also says, hello, good evening. Let's look at the other folks. How about on uh, PJ says, hello, cute doggy. This is Tanjiro, by the way. If you guys are asking what his name is, Tanji is, uh, he's very short, but he's also long and he looks like a German shepherd because he's, mom is a German shepherd, but his dad is a dachshund. So you can just imagine how they mated and how the hell did that happen? But he turned out to be all right and he turned out to be a cute creature. Ooh, Rachel says from LinkedIn, we had the same dog, really? Same breed, seriously. Because a Dax Hunt and a German Shepherd would be a very rare breed. No, Tanji? Right? He knows that he's in front of the camera, by the way. So he's acting like this. But when he's off cam, he's just going to be his naughty self. Good morning from Canada, says Ted. Good morning also. Uh, off topic. What can you say about the 48 Laws of Power? Someone says, I think I've posted a lot of vid uh, videos about it. Great book, but it's not. those are not laws. Those are the labels that Robert Greene did to make it look like it's a law. right? So it's not something that's cast in stone. Abdul says, hello, I am a Rohingya student from Pakanbaru, Indonesia. I would like to be a businessman in the future. I wish you the best. Uh, Abdul Khan with your endeavor. It's not going to be an easy feat, but doable, exciting, lots of ups and downs. Uh, there's absence of stability, obviously, but I think it's going to be rewarding in the end. Ridi also says, hello, good evening. Thank you. We got lots of folks on LinkedIn, by the way. I just noticed that. Let's do more attendance check. Uh, Biberly Danseco also says, good evening. Thank you for joining us in this session. McCoy says it's his birthday. PJ's asking Tanjiro from the anime. Yes, he's named after one of my favorite animes of all time. That's Demon Slayer. And I think Tanjiro embodies integrity, leadership, and all these things. So I want those to be the same qualities of my dog. I'm trying to humanize them. Of course, that's wrong. But uh, there you go. Dave says, I'm actually living and working in Japan. My favorite country in the world, by the way. The politics within the organization here is too obvious. Ah, so my brother finished his graduate studies and also his, he worked for a bit, for about a year in Japan. He lived in Japan for more than three years, three to four years. And he definitely told me that uh, the culture is so different. So the way it's portrayed in films about the late nights, the absence, for example, of having to confront each other, okay? Uh, those things are true, and it can be really hard, he said. So I can sympathize with you, okay? Okay, 
Gladiators and Suits, we need to start our session now. I need you to start please typing your questions in the chat box. Let's get the ball rolling. We're going to keep this tight for an hour until 10 o'clock. And as usual, we'll be giving away some prizes. We have a 500 peso gift certificate from our sponsor, and that is Osh or Oso Healthy Snacks. I'm also going to be giving away some free tickets to our upcoming workshop this Thursday. That's two days from now. I'm going to give you uh, tickets to our either leadership in time of hybrid work era. And the other one is, uh, it's a business workshop. It's entitled, How to Manage Irate Customer. So if you happen to be a business owner or you're in customer service or sales, this is a very apt topic that I think it's a must attend. So we'll give away some free tickets also for that. Okay. Ooh, someone says here, Abdul Khan says, but sir, I am, I have been a refugee and I can't see an opportunity to study. So what would you like to suggest and motivate me about my future? Uh, yes, I've heard about the Rohingya tribe and I am aware that many of them are either passportless or citizenless. Am I right, Abdul Khan? Right? And many are also refugee. I do recommend, if you do have internet connection, and it seems like you have because you're online in this Take advantage of a lot of scholarships and make sure that your scholarship applications talk about that your application is not just about yourself, but rather about your people and how your people needs more representation around the world and how your culture needs to be represented. And one way of doing that and giving back is to be able to reach out to education that is world class. So that could also mean studying in another country, for example. Okay. All right. Let's start. How do I register for the seminar about the leadership? You can go to our website, jonathanyabut.com. Okay. But I'm also going to be giving away some free tickets today for that. Oh, someone is saying on TikTok, but kayo maniniwala jan, wala siyang business. So these are the kinds of comments from people who don't have an idea what they're talking about. <laughs> Not easily shaken by it because I am confident of what I do and what I know about myself. So just want to call this out because I think when we post something on TikTok or Facebook, for example, a lot of us get easily shaken when people criticize who we are. And I want to ask you, I want to, how do I use the word? I want to remind you that Again, it's going to be a sentence from Eleanor Roosevelt. No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. If you let someone rent space in your head for too long, it's going to be a tough day for you or a tough week if you're going to prolong it. If they're not paying your rent and if they're not even putting the food on your table, you have to let them go. Both in your visibility on your phone, in your mind, right? And in your heart. Ooh, um... Reno says, Sir Jonathan, I saw you in Thailand during the AXA Prime. Oh, yeah. We did a motivational talk in Thailand for some folks in AXA of Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. Yes. I think that was September last year. By the way, trivia, did you know that they did not have a clicker and a properly functioning laptop during that time? So I was calling out the organizers because I was about to speak and they were not properly prepared. Okay. Okay, let me cover this question first. This is from Facebook. How do you manage burnout in the workplace? This is a very generic question, by the way, but let me splice it into smaller chunks. Remember that burnout has identifiable symptoms. One of them is you're starting to disengage with your work, meaning the moment you see your laptop, the moment you see your emails, you feel gross about it. You feel disgusted about it. And you feel like it's associated automatically to feelings of exhaustion, the feelings of being uninspired, the feelings of maybe perhaps being tortured mentally, for example. Another example of that, a physical symptom is uh, absenteeism. You have a tendency to file for a sick leave on a Friday or Monday. You usually clock out on time, meaning if work ends at 5 o'clock, you feel that you have to just go out immediately by 4.55. 
that's also a symptom that I think managers have to look out for. How do you manage burnout in the workplace? One is your workload. More than anything else, we're going to have burnout if you feel that work is endless. That the moment you finish Project X, there is Project Y and there is Project Z that's also waiting for you. So if it's an issue of workload, I'm going to say my favorite answer of all time. You have to negotiate this with your manager. Because work is not going to... It, it, it's not going to end. It will continue, right? As I say nga, para yan tain ng elepante. Lalabas ng lalabas lang yan the entire time. You have to talk to your manager and say, I would love to contribute in this company. However, the more that the workload continues to pile up, I don't think I'll be able to make it at the end of this month, right? I don't think I'll be able to continue inspiring myself by the end of the year. Is there a way that I can negotiate that I can only focus my priorities on Project X and Y? Can we delay Project Z to another month? Or is there a way that I can ask for support from you that Project Z is not only my sole responsibility? Someone else should also help me cover for it. Okay. I also want to highlight that ah, sometimes over being overloaded, it's not just because there is so much work. Maybe it's because you're not skilled enough to do it. What do I mean? The job is not that hard. It's just that it's your first time to do it. And because it's your first time to do it, it will take you more hours or days to do it than someone who has mastered it. So the solution is not to lessen the job. The solution is do more training. Upscale your capabilities or purchase a software, purchase a gadget, that will help you get the job done faster. Okay, That's usually one of the reasons why you can be burned out. You feel overwhelmed both physically and also mentally. Okay, Another, one last, another source of burnout is going to be the toxicity in the company. Meaning, left and right, you don't like the colleagues that you're working out with. You feel that you are bullied. People pass on their work to you, even if they're supposed to be doing that. Uh the concept of the practice of cursing in emails, in meetings is so normal that everyone feels that they have the right to hurt other people's feelings. That can also cause burnout. Okay? This part, unfortunately, you can't solve overnight. And neither can you just talk to every person and say, can you please change? Can you do better? These are the kinds of situations where and I will reconsider if I should be staying in this company for three or six months more. So there. Okay, I hope I was able to answer your question. By the way, for those that are watching this on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, I would love to request for some likes and some hearts. Same thing also for folks on TikTok. Would be great to appreciate that. It's one way for us to be able to improve our algorithm. Okay, If you're also learning something so far or realizing something so far, could you please give us an exclamation mark? It would help me, it would help me and my team be able to reach out to bigger audiences. Oh, I like this question from Mabel. This is from YouTube. Okay. So the question from Mabel is Can becoming a stoic person help you climb the corporate ladder? My answer is yes and no. Okay. So, as a background, what is stoicism? So, from the Greek philosophers who are practicing it, which we call as the Stoics, stoicism is the belief that you do not react on anything that is happening around you, you're simply neutral. So it can even be as extreme as someone is crying in front of you or someone is provoking you, you don't react. You don't see it as something that's bad. You don't see it as something that you have to avenge yourself with. Okay? Stoicism in the modern world, for example, is if you have a manager who doesn't like you, doesn't smile at you, or doesn't even hang out with you for coffee, you don't take it personally and you just shrug your shoulder and say, huh, my boss is just really like that, but I'm just going to get my job done so I can get what I need to get from my salary and I will derive my happiness. Perhaps instead of getting that from my boss, I'll get it from my teammates or something else. Okay? So my point here, Mabel, is yes, it can be beneficial because you're not easily affected by your emotions. You're not easily affected by other people's judgments. On the flip side, it may not be good all the time because sometimes 
people are already giving you some constructive criticism and you don't see it as something that you should work on. So mukha kang, ang Tagalog, what do you call it? Uh, manhid. Right? Everyone's been telling you that the way you speak is offensive. The way you speak in meetings is not as polite. But you think, but that's who I am. I'm going to be who I am. Right? So you're ex- exercising a level of just shrugging your shoulders. So that may not also be good. So it's a double-edged sword. Okay? So it's all, I call this as the Goldilocks rule. The Goldilocks rule is the rule of balance. Remember the fairy tale Goldilocks? She went to the house of the bears. When she wanted to eat the porridge, one porridge was too sweet or too cold. When she went to another porridge, it was too hot. And then she went to the last porridge. It was just the right amount of temperature. That's where she gravitated to. That's the Goldilocks rule. In life, when someone gives you a piece of advice, such as Jonathan Yabut, for example, you don't take his advice literally. You take it, you adjust according to your specific situation, you strike for balance also. Okay? Okay, let's continue. Gosh, I've, I've been missing some questions now on TikTok. Oh, I like this question. This is from TikTok from Hey, It's Me Pick. How do you handle people who believe that they are introvert, but you see potential in them? Okay. First, this question has a bad assumption. The bad assumption meaning that if you are introverted, you will not be as successful as the extroverted. Number two, the bad assumption here is that only extroverted people will be able to succeed. I disagree. They may have an advantage because usually extroverted people are loud, animated, and sociable. But that doesn't mean that if you are not as loud and sociable, people no longer will like you or people will no longer assign you projects and neither will you be able to collaborate properly with your other teammates. I disagree. Steve Jobs was an introvert. Uh, Bill Gates is an introvert. All of these guys are not as sociable. They're not as loud. They're not as animated. But... The advantage is whenever they face challenges, they do not automatically pull people. They will think on their own, do some introspection, share the information only to a small circle of people that they trust, and then they only start working afterwards, which I think is a good thing because if you happen to be extroverted, you have a tendency to panic easily. And that's not a good thing as a leader in times of crisis. So there are advantages to being an introvert. Case in point, introverts think before they speak. That's important in meetings. That's important in public gatherings. So I'm going to challenge the statement. It doesn't mean that if you are an introvert, you have lesser potential than someone who's louder. Introverts are also good in non-verbal communication. They may be good instead in writing. They may be good instead with private one-on-one communication rather than spending it with a group of people or spending time in a party. Okay? Okay, one more. I like this question. YouTube folks, you guys are on a roll. So a question from Jap Ventures. John, is it okay to decline or reject Facebook friend request from your workmates? And how will I answer if she asks, why didn't you accept my friend request? And I know that it's my right to reject. I think you have all the rights because it's your space. It's your property. I also think that it's totally understandable to not accept friendship connection on Facebook because you don't want your personal life to be publicly shared with others. You don't want people to know what you've been doing over the weekend. right? You don't want you to be judged your promotion to be judged based on your lifestyle choices, your religion, or your political posts. Because that's going to be unfair. But people do that. right? So I would strongly support you if you don't want to add them. However, if someone asks you, this has happened to me many times. So my two techniques, technique number one, I will just keep on pretending and say, you know, I don't really check Facebook that much. I'm not as active on social media. So I forgot to check you out and add you. Another example would be, I wasn't able to see your friend request. And then I'll say, let me get back to you tonight or tomorrow when I check it again. Usually when someone repeatedly asks two or three times, they will start fading away. I would go for that. 
otherwise, if the person keeps on insisting, that would be weird. That would be creepy also if they keep on insisting to add you on Facebook. I would add you on LinkedIn. I will not add workmates on Facebook, Instagram. I wouldn't. Jericho is asking on YouTube also. Very good question as well. Any thoughts on terminated employees? Do they still have a chance to get a new job? I do believe in second chances, especially if the person has fully shown that they are committed to change. That, I think, is the concept of retribution and also the concept of uh, being able to revitalize and reborn yourself. Right? The challenge, however, with terminated employees is that most of the time, the reasons for their termination has always, is always going to be documented. So a company X that you are applying for can always request for a copy from HR of your past company and indicate why. So if ever this happens, I would strongly encourage you to prepare a good answer. Prepare a good answer and explain how you feel bad and sorry about it. And more importantly, what have you been doing in the past X months or X years to shift from being a bad person to being a good person? Or for whatever it is that you've done that caused your termination. Okay. Another example would be don't, so it, you can go for small steps. Don't immediately apply to bigger companies. Apply first in smaller companies, companies that will likely let you be part of their team, even if you were terminated. So apply, spend years in that company, or apply to two or three, such that in the next three to five years, that experience already proves that even if you were terminated in the other company, you've proven your worth that you have changed significantly. And then when you want to now apply for a bigger company or you want to work abroad, you can explain to them that that happened 10 years ago. I'm a totally different person now. I've changed. I've learned something from it. And as you noticed, after that termination, I was able to succeed in the new roles that I was applying for in the other companies that I entered. Okay. Let's answer. You know what I'll do? Where's my other? I don't have my other phone. I'm just trying to check TikTok here just so I can. Because the light is a different, it's a different angle here. Okay. Now I can see better the questions on TikTok. Oh, okay. Let me answer a question on TikTok that's related to about adding people on social media. And a question here of Hansel, what do I explain to my boss who found out that I blocked him on IG for privacy reasons? Uh, question, does it mean that your boss confronted you about it? If yes, I would simply say I'm in, I placed myself as inactive on Instagram. If your boss is really into it, they will find a way to use another person's account to check if you're really de deactivated. If they found that out, that's their problem. That's their obsession. I will move on because they're, this is not the most important thing that I want to manage. Okay, But I don't think that you should be concerned so much about it unless that the blocking was because of another underlying reason that you had a conflict before in the past. Okay? Let's answer one more from, oh, I like this. Also from TikTok, from Bok Novi. How should you deal with your co-managers who act as if they are superior just because they are older? You know what? I think the number one immunity to being bullied or being like swept aside is competence. And if you're able to prove that you are so damn good in what you do, you overachieve whatever targets that you have. You will be respected regardless of your age. So I think that the best immunity at work is proving that your age does not define who you are. That's one. Number two, I'm also guilty of this. The more you think about it and the more 
you feel that you are a victim, the more it shows to other people. And the more that they've noticed and observed this from you, the more that they will keep on treating you. So you have to let go of that mentality because it will emanate from the way you speak, the way you act, the way you are shy around them, the way you avoid them, for example. Okay? Let's ask another question here. This is from... Ace Irlanda from Facebook. What is your advice if your boss offered you a promotion after uh, offer you a promotion after she now that looking for another job? Okay, Ace, I think your question has your sentence has been cut. Am I right that your question is what is your advice if your boss offered you a promotion but you are now looking for other job opportunities? Oof, tricky. Because you might not be able to find a new job opportunity, so would it be better instead to just take on that promotion? But what if you found a new job and the job offer is even way better? Okay? I will repeat what I keep on saying when it comes to a promotion that is offered to you late in the game. If you really are worth it, you should not be triggering a resignation, a complaint, or a heart-to-heart -heart talk just for you to get promoted. Great companies will always promote people even without being told and without being forced. So my question is, why are you only being offered now this promotion? Is it late in the game? And is this promotion perhaps a strategy of the company to make sure that you do not leave because they have probably been sensing that you are actively looking for a job elsewhere. That's my concern. So you're being promoted not because you deserve it. You're being promoted for retention purposes. And I hate that kind of promotion. Because it's, it's a selfish reason. It's just that they don't want the hassle of having to replace you afterwards. Okay, Ace? So if that is not your issue, however... And it's just about looking for other job opportunities. My question now for you is, if you still get promoted anyway, do you really still like the job? Do you still enjoy the company? If not, then your question is answered. Go look for another opportunity that will make you happy and will compensate you according to your real value. Okay? A LinkedIn user is asking this. So this one's anonymous. What's one piece of advice you have for those who are currently in leadership roles and preparing to be a leader? My personal mantra as a leader is that my way is not the only way. And that means even if I think that there is one specific way of presenting, talking to a client, doing a PowerPoint slide, presenting a spreadsheet, even if I think I have the best practice, I will not impose it to my people. I will recommend it to them, but I will also respect the fact that they have their own styles of doing it. And the reason for that is because one best way to engage your people is to give them space and autonomy. My way isn't the only way. Because the converse of that is a leader who dictates. This is only the type of template that I want you to use for your PowerPoint slides. When you talk to a customer, I'm going to type the spill for you. And I'm going to make you say that spill instead. So leaders are supposed to be coaches. They are not chief problem solver. A lot of leaders keep on complaining, you know, Anna, my associate, she doesn't know what to do. She's been in the job for five years and she still hasn't progressed. Maybe the reason why she's not doing well is because you keep on dictating her what to do rather than coaching her what she can do. So as usual, you don't give them the fish. You teach them how to fish. That is what most leaders miss out. Leaders have a tendency to say, I don't trust your work, so let me be the one to do it instead. And that prolongs for years. And by the time that you've noticed it, your people haven't learned anything. Oh, someone says, see you tomorrow. Is that because you're attending our workshop at SMX? If you are, thank you. So please let me know uh, your name, by the way. Your, okay, someone's asking from TikTok, what are your thoughts on executives and leaders who do not want to change an old process? Uh, 
they're being selfish. They're being selfish because, okay, before I even label them as selfish, okay, the reason why people don't want to change is because they are comfortable with what they are currently doing. And we all know this. It's inconvenient, right? It's inconvenient to do a different routine, a different process, right? So if someone doesn't want to change, it might be because they are afraid that if I change a process, a product, or a person, the cost of having to start all over again might be just too high. That it will cost me sadness, it will cost me more money, it will cost me more time. Okay? But I also have to challenge everyone who doesn't who resists change, but that everyone at the end of the day will change. Governments will change, customers will change, technology will change. Kung hindi ka gagalaw, ikaw mapag-iiwanan. And by the time that everyone has already moved on to artificial intelligence, everyone has moved on to using a lot of technological tools, you're still stuck in the same patterns and what got you here does not necessarily will get you there. Okay? Uh, I remember I attended this virtual workshop about artificial intelligence and they said, it was a marketing workshop and they said, Artificial intelligence is not going to replace marketing people. It's not going to replace salespeople. However, salespeople and marketing people who use artificial intelligence will replace those who do not. So change is the only thing that's constant. And I think change is exciting because I will get bored if after a few years, I still keep on eating the same ice cream. I still keep on eating the same... Uh, using the same product. I still keep on using the same process. I think the goal, and at the end of the day, if we don't know what happens after life, wouldn't it be amazing that at least when you were alive, you tried as many flavors as you can. You've tried as many situations as you can. Okay. Let's ask this question. This is from Art Neil. I've noticed Art Neil's always been in our workshops, by the way, in our uh, live sessions. John, what is your advice on how to deal with a manager who thinks that all of the observation I, I provided are just all excuses, but I want him or her to know that these are facts as I'm doing the groundwork? Document it. Document it, provide evidence. And when I say evidence, provide videos, photos, anecdotes from people who have witnessed it. Don't just transfer secondhand information because everyone's going to doubt that. Okay. It's all in the receipts. And it's hard to rebut receipts. Amen. Can I get an exclamation mark if you agree? It's hard to rebut receipts. It's easy to invent receipts. I, I also need to call that out. But when you have a receipt that's been consistently used with all the documentation, it's hard to just keep on, to just rebut and say that's not true at all. Okay, Facebook again, question. As a supervisor, says Ella, with a team consisting of older and more experienced members, I am struggling to find the right balance between treating them with respect while maintaining my authority. What are some effective strategies for managing a team with more experience and age? Okay, so tomorrow we do have, this is going to be part of our workshop, Ella. So our workshop tomorrow at the SMX Convention Center in SM Aura, Fort BGC, Leadership in the Hybrid Work Era. Just plugging. If you guys are interested, you can go and attend. The tickets are available in our website, jonathanyabut.com. Let me answer this quickly. Please remember that when your direct report is older than you, it is normal that there is going to be a tinge of insecurity. It is normal that they will feel that I should be the leader instead of you because I happen to have more experience, more tenure, and I am older. So you cannot fight against that belief anymore. However, you can still win their side. And one way to do that is every time you talk to them, your choice of words and the way you say things to them in terms of support, make them feel that you are their ally, not their competition. When I say that, when I do my annual evaluation programs with my direct reports who happen to be older, I enthusiastically talk about their uh, potential promotion. Because my goal as their ally is I'm not here to stop your promotion. 
I'm here to also want you to get promoted the same way that I got earlier promoted a few years back. Because I also see that in you. But in order for that to happen, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. That mindset needs to be established. You are an ally, not a competitor. Because the more that they see you as a competitor in terms of the position, because even if you are already the leader, they probably may still be gunning for your position. And the more they see you as a competitor, the more that there will always be tensions. So position yourself as an ally in this case. That's one. Number two, I've mentioned this a while ago, nothing else will set you up for credibility but your competency. If you're so damn good in your job, you're always earlier. You're always 110% available. You're always able to reach the targets more than the 100%. It's hard to question why you are the leader and they aren't. So this is where Ella, I'm going to ask you that you need to hustle hard because every time you make a mistake and every time you fall short of the expectations, they will nitpick on that and they will use that as an excuse and as a reason that you're not worthy of the position. So heavy is the head that wears the crown, as they say, but that is the best way to keep your immunity also. Okay. The third is build relationship, build rapport. One of the best ways to make someone lower their guards and lower their fences is when you find something in common between the two of you. When I say something in common, it could be food. It could be a Netflix show. It could be having a family. It could be the idea that he is a father and he reminds you of your father and you've talked about it over lunch, for example. Those are the kinds of conversations that are personal but will form professional bonds. So Ella, perhaps a team building session can work. Perhaps a heart-to-heart -heart coffee or dinner with your team can also work. These things are important. Okay, I hope I was able. I wish I can answer more. Okay, but I need to spend time for the other questions. But if you are interested, you can also come to our workshop next May, happening on May twenty-six. Because tomorrow might be too short notice for you. Okay, let's. People are typing on TikTok that I haven't been raising their questions. Let I'm gonna do that now. And let me answer. One question on TikTok before we give away our prizes halfway through this live session now. Someone's asking, Kayo po ba ay taga Malinaw Aklan? Yes, both my parents are, are natives of Aklan. Someone's asking, does that mean, John, that you have to be perfect in what you do? I'm not, no one can be perfect. That's a given. But you have to hustle extra Five more points, 10 more points. Ooh, okay. TikTok's asking, so I can't read the name. DNCFY is asking, what are your thoughts in having a manager who provides insufficient guidance and mentorship? This happens. There are going to be boss who simply will not embrace the responsibility of being your mentor. If this is the case, two things. Either one, do a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Tell them that you are hungry and thirsty for learning and tell them that, boss, I would love to be able to reach my sales target. But for me to be able to do that, I need to ask more on X, Y, and Z. Be specific on what you think is lacking. Don't just say that it's lacking. Lacking on what? Lacking on the amount of time? Lacking on the topic? Lacking on the case simulations, perhaps? Are they lacking on the software? You have to specify. That's one. Number two, if you really have a boss who just doesn't care at all, doesn't even talk to you as much as they should, then you have to embrace the fact that your learning must come from other people, other senior leaders, your colleagues, HR, if you can ask for training sessions, right? That also means that sometimes you have to bypass your boss in getting certain approvals for trainings. It sounds ridiculous, but that can happen. And I know some people who are able to circumvent their structure in the company so that every time they request for a training, opportunity for a conference, they go to HR instead. Or they go to another team leader who can spare an extra budget covering another person. That also happens. Again, easier said than done, but you have to exploit all these opportunities. Okay. I would also treat my vendors, my third-party agency. So I was in marketing. 
I had moments. I'm gonna be vulnerable about this. When you win a TV show, and your boss happens to be Mr. Tony Fernandez, obviously Tony cannot dedicate his entire time for his apprentice. He has 17 direct reports, and obviously, as much as I want to ask from him to mentor me, this was when I won the apprentice. By the way, when I was based in Kuala Lumpur, obviously I had the. I felt that. Hmm, I feel like he's not giving me as much attention as I wished I could. But I also understood that he couldn't himself because there are just so many things to do for business. So when that happened, I had to take it under my control. I, I had the opportunity to connect with the other CEOs, other vice presidents of the company. I would treat them as my mentors. I would proactively sit down in meetings and ask permission. Hi, team. Can I sit in in this meeting? I just want to learn more about how aviation works. So I was in the airline industry. I would sit in in meetings and just listen, even if I didn't understand the jargons, just so I can learn more. And the more that I learned, the more that I made mistakes, the more I realized that I can learn, even if I don't have a direct mentor to do that for me. So you really have to steer it towards where you want it to happen because no one will take good care of your career but you. It is an individual effort at the end of the day. Okay? Yes? May I give away some prizes now to our participants? Could you please give me a letter P as in prize if you guys are up for this? Just want to check if you guys are ready. I want to give away now tickets to our upcoming workshop. This is happening on uh, Friday at 2 o'clock p.m., and this is happening on at the SMX Convention Center in Fort BGC in SM Aura. It's beside Market Market, if you're familiar uh, with the mall. So the SMX Convention Center is our home for the past few months for all our workshops. And I want to give away five winners. Each winner will be able to get two tickets for our upcoming workshop, How to Manage Irate Customers. Now, if you happen to win, but this is not applicable for you, you can transfer the ticket to someone that you think will benefit from it. We strongly recommend this ticket for those who are in sales, customer service, business owners, entrepreneurs. The topic is all about how do you manage a customer who's complaining violently, who's been verbally abusive, or how can you win them back and make them as loyal customers, even if they you've lost their trust, for example. So we're going to give you a lot of case simulations, best practices, etc. Okay, is everyone ready? I hope you guys are. Let me just uh, share the... So there you go. This Folks on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, you can see that on your screen. That is Level Up Your Customer Service, How to Manage Irate Customers, April 28th, Friday, 2 to 5 p.m. And of course, if you're also interested to bring an entire team, you can get your tickets at jonathanyabut.com. If you guys are ready, can I get the letter R? Would love to see that, please. Because I'll be asking a trivia question now. And I'll be selecting five winners from different platforms. I'm, I'm going to get winners from YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and also TikTok. Okay? Each winner will get two tickets. And the tickets are transferable. Okay? Trivia question. Um, okay, this is my mistake. I wasn't able to think of a proper question now. But let me think quickly. Um, give me a category, by the way, if you guys want me to be creative about this. Give me a category that you guys are confident to be quizzed about for a certain trivia question. Anyone can suggest? Animals, science. Oh, gosh. Guys, chemistry and physics are not my strongest. I hated it. I was good in biology because that was memorization. But gosh, I hated. I hated chemistry. Marketing, current events. Puede, 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 current events. Uh, oof, oof, oof. Okay, so get to the lang. So get, let's go for chemistry. And I'll just ask an easy one. I'll just ask an easy one. What is the chemical symbol for copper? 
What is the symbol for copper? Okay, I'll be selecting five winners. Five winners. Wow, you guys are fast, especially guys on TikTok. The correct answer, by the way, is C U. C U. Okay, so see you in our workshop. Here are the winners. Let me call out. By the way, the the fastest ones are already from TikTok here. So let me call out. The first winner is It's Java You All. That's the name of the winner. The first one. The second winner is Silver Silver Lanyang. Am I right? Silver Lanyang. Congratulations. That's also on TikTok. My third winner, at least nakahabol. My third winner is from Facebook. Winner is Dave Nunag. Congratulations, Dave Nunag. My fourth winner is on YouTube. And my winner is Lon Lee. Lon Lee. Congratulations. And then my fifth winner, ladies and gentlemen, also on TikTok, the name is Hey, It's Me Pick. Hey, It's Me Pick. Congratulations to all our five winners. So please send me a private message and please do that quickly because we have to give you the tickets immediately because it's just going to be two days left before you can attend the workshop. Remember, if you cannot attend, you have to send us the names of who will be attending on your behalf so you can transfer and you do not waste the ticket. The ticket is 1,799 pesos. That's a lot. So that's around almost, almost 4,000 pesos worth of prizes. So please send us a DM, send us a private message, and we will see you in our workshop April 28th, Friday, 2 p.m. at SMX Convention center. Could you please give me an exclamation mark? Let's congratulate our winners. I'll be giving one more round of prizes. We'll be giving away our 500 peso gift certificate from Oh So Healthy Snacks in a while. Stay tuned for that before we end the session. Okay. Can I be the one to ask a favor from you guys? Could you please give us a like or a heart if you haven't yet? We will appreciate that. It's going to help us improve. I'm going to call out our Facebook guys because, guys, you are nothing. On TikTok, we have 6,800 likes. On Facebook, we are we're peanuts. I want you to increase that. Come on. You can do better than that, guys. Okay? So thank you. That's why we love our TikTok crowd. Okay. Let's ask a question now. Um, okay. Oh, someone saying, Claude is saying TikTok platform is really good. You know, TikTok's really been very generous to us because I've been hesitating. I will be honest about this. The reason why we've hesitated. So people are asking me, John, it's been years. Why are you still not on TikTok? I've only been on TikTok on November last year. And the reason for that is because I just think that sometimes the comment section on TikTok can be so toxic. Can I get an exclamation mark if you guys agree? And I always notice this. The most toxic comments on TikTok are the ones that do not have a photo, have zero followers, have zero comments. There is just absence. I'm going to use the word absence of respect in the platform, right? So sometimes, sobrang palengke ni TikTok in terms of the culture of people. And I am disappointed about the discourse. Because if you go to LinkedIn or Facebook, you can really have an intelligent discourse. And that inspires me to post. So this is why we've been very careful on TikTok. But so far, we're happy. We've, we do have a lot of toxic comments from some people. But you know what I do? I just delete. We delete it because the goal of the person is not to debate. The goal of the person is to make us feel bad about ourselves. And that is not our intention. We will delete and we will block if we think that your comment is not helpful at all to the discussion. So that is, by the way, my number one principle. We're Speaking of which, I'm going to insert on Friday, sorry, tomorrow, 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we have another workshop called Social Media Marketing, Level Up Your Marketing Skills, also with SMX Convention Center. I'm, I will be spending a few slides on that part. How do you manage trolls? How do you manage people who are 
not contributing to the growth of your business. James is asking, am I toxic just having this profile? Why? Why would you ask that? Is it because of your anime? Sino anime to? Can I just... James, I'm, I'm sure I know which anime is this. Can you please tell me which anime is this? It's, it looks familiar, but I can't pinpoint who, which character is this, by the way. I'm a big anime fan, by the way. Uh, I am disappointed that Demon Slayer skipped so many episodes from the manga version. They're, they skipped everything. Like I wish that certain Hashira's deaths were part of... Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's... Um, Okay, let's cover this question for Maybell. I am a freelance writer and one of our clients I write articles for wants to hire me directly as their writer. If I accept, what does it say about me to my company? And if I decline, what am I to the client? Wait, Maybell, can you please clarify again? You're a freelance writer, which means you're not working for another company. You're offering your services to another company. Am I right? But one of your clients wants to hire you directly as a client. Oh, are you telling me that you're being pirated by your client and you're concerned that the other company that you're working for will feel betrayed? Yes, Mabel, am I right? Oh, James, I'm not familiar with this. Uh, I'm not familiar with this anime, unfortunately. I am not a 120% uh, enthusiast. You can't call me on Otaku yet if that's the case. But let me check. Let me let me Google that later. But let me answer this question for Mabel. Freelance writer but full-time. Okay, so here's the question of Mabel. I am working for Company X and one of my clients that we are serving wants to pirate me to transfer from my company and move to theirs. Is that a bad thing? There are two ways of answering this. Number one, you should only take good care of your career as long as you are not hurting anyone, as long as you're not breaching any contract, go for what is best for you. And if that means moving to a different company, I'd support you. I've seen this many times. When I was working at Globe Telecom 10 years ago, sometimes the engineers of Globe Telecom would be pirated by engineers of Nokia and vice versa or Microsoft. Of course, they would always say that it's wrong, but that's the name of the game. Right? So afterwards, they now impose the non exclusivity, sorry, the non compete clause just to make sure that people don't keep on transferring to other competitors or to peripheral industries, for example. But I would go for this, Mabel. If ever you are asked what's the reason why, just say that the opportunities are better. And you have to accept the fact that you might be able to, bri to burn bridges. Unfortunately, that happens. So my question now is. Is the potential burning of the bridge going to be worth it This a the higher benefits that you will get from transferring to this other new company? Are you looking for stability? Are you looking for higher salary? Are you looking for perhaps you like the client better than your teammates in this company? That's why you want to move. You need to cover those criteria. At the end of the day, it should be the happiness and satisfaction. Um, question from Jericho, is being not regularized in your work equivalent to being terminated? Not all the time. After six months, if you still are a probationary employee, the company can still decide to keep you, but under probationary terms. Meaning, it's just that you will still not get the full-term benefits, even on the eighth month or twelfth month. And they will do another revalida or another checking of your performance after one year. So not all the time. But yes, it is a red flag because that means that after six months and you're still not regularized, they are not happy with your performance yet. So you need to work on that. Because maybe they will give you one more chance, but maybe not anymore a second chance. Okay? Okay, question from TikTok from Juan. What will you choose? A highly compensated job or a job related to your degree? 
first of all, I don't think these two things are at par- uh, in parity in terms of the value. Right? I don't think they're even comparable because there are a lot of jobs that you are related to your degree but are also high paying. Okay, What I think you're trying to say here is what I rather want to compare is a highly compensated job that you do not like a lot versus you love the job but you're not compensated as much. Okay, Again, I will sound like I'm complicating it but the answer will depend on the person. If you are rich and you don't care about money, go for the job that you love. But if you think that you have a family, a house, a travel to Europe that you want to save up for this December, you may hate the job, but because what inspires you is what you get out of it afterwards, go for the higher paying job. Because at the end of the day, you might hate your job today, but as you go along, after a few weeks or months, people will change, projects will change, you might be able to learn how to love your job after some time. So there's a possibility. It's easier to change your perspective about a job. It's hard to increase your salary more than anything else because you don't decide that. You get to decide your perspective. You don't decide how much you're getting. Okay? Jay Milia is saying, I recently followed you and almost finished watching really all videos. We got more than 500 videos, huh, JR? Uh, but I'm just kidding. Regardless, if you have watched many of them, thank you. Because that is the reward that we get from people who watch our videos. Okay, Art Neil's very persistent with this question on YouTube. So let me, let me humor you with this. He's, he's saying, John, last question. I've been a supervisor for nearly four years, but I am struggling not to feel bad If I deliver bad news to a team member, that will impact their bonus or incentive. So Artnil, are you saying if someone did not get a salary increase, you are afraid to break the news to an employee because you might be breaking their spirits? Am I right? Okay. Yes. It seems like this is your issue. Two things. Number one, it's normal to feel that way. We don't want to offend people. We don't want to hurt other people's feelings. Especially if you're Asian, we are non-confrontational. We are non-conflict-driven people. We love harmonizing. So embrace who you are. However, you also have to change your perspective. And that is, I am not with a family. I am not working with family members. I'm working with professionals. So you have to treat them with professionalism. And that is, you have to break it to them without losing empathy. You can say sorry, you can feel bad, but you have to explain to them more than anything else, why are they not getting that bonus or incentive? And you have to be fair because if you explain it to them properly, they have to understand that there was a shortcoming from their end, maybe their performance, maybe expectations, so that the next time around, they can improve. That's what you owe to these people, okay? What you owe them is the ability to be better so that this does not happen again in the future. More training, clearer understanding, more coaching, etc. Um, someone's asking, any tips in continuing a post business? I just want to do it with our coconut oil production. Question, Jani. What happened, why it got paused, by the way? And why do you want to continue it afterwards? That's very important in the question here because your intentions for wanting to continue it beyond money is important. Is it it because you've already made a lot of sunk costs or investments and you want to make sure you can maximize your profits from it? Is it a legacy business from your family? These things will decide. If it's worth pursuing it, ultimately you have to balance the profitability and is this something that you want to do, right? My grandfather, may he rest in peace, was a copra farmer in a clan and he did really well because he was only one of the copra farmers in his area. I couldn't say that he loved it, but he loved what he got out of it. And this is why sometimes We should not be judging people based on what they do. If they don't love what they're doing, 
But perhaps the reason why they're doing it is because what they get out of it, meaning they don't like the process, but they love the money afterwards. And the money leads to other things that make them happy. A better house, more travels, food for the family, etc. So same thing also for business. You have to balance both the profitability and whether you like being in that business in the first place. Okay? I also think that coconut oil is always going to be in demand because we have come to a point in life where in even other countries outside Asia now have full appreciation thanks to social media and have been educated about the benefits of coconut oil. Okay? So I do think that it's a very lucrative business to pursue unless I don't know anything about the regulations lately. Um, JR is asking, I'd like to enter the world of freelancing. I am currently learning some basics and I need more. Any suggestions? I have a full-time job as a teacher. Mm. My ultimate tip for people who want to pursue freelancing is get something that is already maximizing your strengths so that you don't need to start from scratch. Because there are certain freelance jobs wherein they look easy on the outside, but the moment you start doing it, it has so much legwork and a lot of learning curve. It's going to eat up your time, especially the first few months. So look for a sideline or a hustle that is already in line to what you are good at. That's one. Number two, try to find a freelance job that does not coincide too much with the same time. Meaning, the meetings have to happen all in the morning. Your full-time job and freelance job, they're going to compete with each other. I think the ideal type of a freelance job is one that happens after your working hours or the intersection is not as big. So for example, your full-time job is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then your freelance job does not have any meetings or any live interactions during daytime but you have to submit deliverables in the evening or after dinner time. So you can switch hats properly without the need to panic. Okay? Let's cover two more questions, and then we'll give away our last prize for our participants. Um... Lloyd is saying, I resigned from my dream position because I feel like I am not welcome in the team. I'm not sure of what your question is here. And this is me just challenging. Okay? This is me not judging. This is me challenging. My immediate reaction upon wanting to resign if I do not like my team is that it must come to a point wherein that team causes stress that I can no longer take. It's the first thing that I think of in the morning. It's the last thing that I think of in the evening. And I can't get it off my mind. And I feel that my confidence level has dropped to a point that I can no longer function properly in my, uh, in my work. If that is what you're feeling, then go and quit. Otherwise, if you have not exhausted everything, meaning you've not talked to these people if you have conflicts with them, you've not asked for help from HR, you haven't asked for help from your manager. I think you are prematurely resigning because you've easily just quit without considering the other resources that are made available for you. Just make sure that you don't regret it saying that I wish I've done X, Y, and Z. Ooh, quick question, but also love this question. Tanji. Can you answer this question for us? Question is, what's the best personality trait that a leader should have? Uh, oof. Top of my mind, diversity. Embracing diversity, the idea that I will not impose my definition of happiness, achievement, work-life balance to my people. As long as they meet their bottom line, they do what they want to do. So if your definition of work-life balance is that you should only enjoy life after office, but a millennial's definition of work-life balance is if there is a gym near the office, I will use my lunch break to go to the gym. 
I will support that. And that what a, that is what a great leader should celebrate. That's diversity. Okay. Okay. Um, advice on how to be a better speaker. Practice more than anything else. Read as many sentences from a magazine or try, this might sound cheesy, try to watch TV shows, including beauty pageants. Answer the questions that are raised from them. Record yourself and listen to yourself how you answer it. The more you see some mistakes, the more you're going to be inspired to change and say, that's not who I am. <laughs> Tanjiro, I need to concentrate. Later na, later. Oh. You're trying to get attention from everyone. Huh? The more you see yourself cringing that you have done. I'll give an example. Huh? I have many clients who discovered that they mentioned the word actually many times in their meetings. So they will say, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this meeting. Actually, we're about to start now. But actually, there are still some people who are not in the room. But actually, there are some coffee and snacks at the back of the room. Please get them first. And actually, we'll start in a few minutes. They did not realize that they were saying that too many times until we recorded them and until they watched that recording. This is very important because self-improvement starts with self-awareness. So the easiest thing, keep on practicing and keep on recording yourself. Recordings alone will give you an idea what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Okay? How to speak English fluently? Practice again. Plus, spend more time with people who also speak fluently. Try to be with friends because the more you speak with them, the more that you will be forced to speak also good. Watch a lot of legal TV series. How to Get Away with Murder, Ali McBeal, uh, The Practice. When I was growing up, these are the TV shows that I've watched. And all of the episodes are always about discussing politics, religion, life, etc. So all of these things make me more comfortable because these are the same topics we talk about in life. All right? So there. Okay, let's give away now our pride. Oh, Suits is also a good TV show. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, let me answer this last one because it's been mentioned too many times on the chat box. Oh, Tanjiro, your tummy is wet na naman. See that? Oh, come on, let's read this question. Help me read it. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, this one I want to read. What is the name of my the name of my dog Roby is Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. See, he looks like Tanjiro, no? Tanjiro Kamado. No, he doesn't, of course. Uh, I think I saw this a while ago. Oh, Max, sorry, I, I'm I'm distracted now. But someone says Maximum. What can you say about the Longanisa issue? Sorry, guys. I've been in front of my laptop working today. I missed that out. Could you please tell me what that issue is? I would love to know. Ayan. Sorry. Ito yung gusto kong uh, sagutin. Uno, I was asking a while ago, what, when is the right time to quit? When should you continue to stay? You know, Juan, some of the viewers are going to be mad at me because this is the number one question I always answer almost on a daily basis. And I almost post it also. So if you have time, catch us on Facebook. We have lots of videos about this. But let me answer this quickly. I think you should only quit after you have exhausted all available resources made for you. If your issue is salary, if your issue is conflict with your boss, talk first to the people concerned. Get their idea and get their point of view and share with them how you feel about it and find a way to negotiate to make it better. How can I increase my salary if X, Y, and Z? If your issue is with a colleague, Talk to them and say that these are your feelings about them. All these things. Only when you have exhausted these things do I think that you have the right to finally tell to yourself, I've done everything in my power and still things don't change. It's okay to quit. Here's my other uh, recommendation though. If money is going to be a potential issue, please do not quit because sometimes when you quit, it is possible that you might be unemployed for many, many months. Because it's going to be hard to look for a new job. So if you have plans of quitting anyway for two or three months from now, start floating your resume on LinkedIn or Job Street two months or three months time. 
so that by the time that you are ready to leave, you are also already interviewing. I'm saying this because some people just quit their job and then they only start looking for a job after they've left the company. So they couldn't find a job after one month. They wouldn't be able to find a job in two months. And then it causes them more anxiety. It pushes them to possible depression because they're running out of funds because they don't have enough savings. So you have to balance both. Okay. Grace Ann is saying, can you please give us tips about closing sales from cold leads? We'll do another. We can do a topic about this next time, but this is an entirely different. But yes, we specialize in sales. We do a lot of workshops for sales insurance, for real estate and insurance as well. So Grace, thanks for reminding me. We can do a topic about this next time. Okay. Gladiators in suits. I really have to end this now. Let's give away a prize. Let's give away a 500 peso gift certificate from our generous partner. And that is Osh. By the way, can I just, I forgot. They asked me to show this. So could you give me like five seconds? Let me get this box from the kitchen. Just wait, huh? got it here. Okay. So um, our sponsor, which is also healthy, this is one of their products. It's Choco Mango Dip Crisps together with their fruits and vegetables. So we're going to give away 500 peso gift certificate that you can claim so you can buy their products in their Lazada store or their official website. I'm going to be choosing one person who gets this question correct. Can I get a letter R if you guys are ready? And Tanjiro is going to help us choose the winner. Tanji, come here. Come here again. Let's go. Okay, you ready to pick the correct one? Okay, so my question. Someone's asking, can you speak in Tagalog? Oo naman. Magunong po ako magtagalog. At magaling po ako magtagalog. At kaya ko magtagalog ng tuloy-tuloy. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you guys, okay, lots of letter R's. We're seeing that now in the chat box as well. Okay. Oof. Now my dilemma is I don't know what question to ask. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Tanji, ano ba pwedeng tanong? What can we ask as a question first? Um, okay, I think I have now. I think I'm going to be asking a question that's related to... To you, Tanji, I think we can ask a question related to you, okay? To your breed, okay. I think this is a good one. I think a lot of you guys know this answer, okay? So as we all know, um, no, I, I don't think I should ask this question. I don't think I should ask this question. I'll change my question now, so okay. Um, gosh, what's that? Give, give me a category, guys, to make this worth it. Anyone? Ano bang pwedeng itanong natin? Ah, okay, sige. World extremes. Okay? World extremes is gonna be our category. Meaning, it has something to do with being the tallest, the fastest, the highest, the slowest, etc. So anything that's like a world Guinness Book of Records type of uh, entry. You guys are okay with that? Yes? Okay. So my question is this. The tallest tower in the ASEAN region or the Southeast Asian region is the Mordeca Tower, which is located in which capital city? Please name that. This city is about four hours away from Metro Manila. This is the tallest tower. It has been just recently built. Okay. Ooh. Wow, you guys are so fast. My winner is actually from TikTok. Uh, by the way, just to be fair, some people are saying maybe because the TikTok registers the answers quickly. Not necessarily. I'm using a different device just so to be fair so that even the lags are also covered. So the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, is it's in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. The Burj Khalifa is currently the tallest. It's found in Dubai, but that's outside the Southeast Asian region. The Biggest, the tallest one is in Kuala Lumpur. So my correct, my winner is Lavender. Congratulations. Lavender with an anime profile pic. I've said an anime, whatever. I don't know. So congratulations. You win 500 peso gift certificate 
from Oh So Healthy or Osh. This is just one of their products. They have lots of other products available. Um, chips, they have cheddar popcorn and lots of other good stuff. Baked, not fried, and they're also gluten-free. Okay? So, thank you. Give me a DM, by the way. And let's give an exclamation mark to our winner, Lavender. Thank you. Pwede po pa hug. Of course. Ayan, oh. Tanjiro is also going to give you a hug. Diba? Tanjiro. Ayan. Ito, pa-baby yan. Pa-baby yan pa ganyan. But the moment he knows that the camera is not in front of him, he's just going to he's just gonna go berserk. Oh, ayan na mo. He's, he knows where the camera is specifically sa Facebook eh. Sa laptop. Okay? So, thank you, dear gladiators and suits. Thank you for keeping me company for the night. As I always say, this is the best time for us to distress after a long day work. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay? I'll try to go online at 9 o'clock again and stay safe and always aim for the best, for the best version that you can be. Bye, guys.